so good this morning. Kids are at school, I've been to the gym, I've managed to get myself a coffee. Uh, unfortunately, it's all gonna go horribly wrong now because I'm heading home to tackle the mountain of housework that has to be done. Um, just coming out the back of a weekend and because uh, everyone's gone back to school and work uh, and I've got the day off today which means housework but um hey doesn't matter I'm going to um, avoid that for a little bit by talking to you and um, I want to talk to you about uh, charge points in particular and um, you probably remember I don't know summer be just before summer last year and the government started making lots of noise and announcements about uh, rolling charge points out across petrol stations um, all over the UK and um the subsidies that they were going to give and how they were going to drive things forward as far as EVs are concerned. Well, I wanted to do a little bit of a look back now and just see where we are and how far along that um, process we've got. Uh, and do we actually have any, um, any more charge stations across the UK as a result of it? So I think probably the best place to start because it's been most heavily publicised is Shell and uh, their attempts to uh, put a charge station in all their major petrol stations that um, were on major routes, uh, albeit they've started in London. Um, and not only have they started in London, they appear to have stayed in London, all bar, I think, one uh, in the Midlands somewhere. In fact, I'll show you the map of um, using their smooth that's with a V, not a TH, Smooth app, that um, is how you access their, um, their charge points. Uh, if you have a look at the map there, you'll see it's just come up and um, yeah, it's all London. I think there's uh, nine in London and one in the Midlands. So yeah, okay, we can say it's still early days, but actually for all the fanfare and um, you know, all the um, publicity that we saw around it, actually they haven't rolled that many out yet. And um, I don't know how quickly they're going to keep rolling out, but um, but it's only one company. This is just Shell on their own um, putting these charge points in. So, you know, a start is better than nothing. But all is not lost. A Genie Point, uh, who um, have, are in conjunction with the Motor Fuel Group, have signed a deal to uh, roll charges out across a number of petrol stations. Uh, Shell being one of them, but also uh, BP, Merco, Jet to name a couple of others, they're the main ones I think. Uh, they are aiming, uh, certainly in January, they've aimed to do uh, 20 new installs. In February 25, and by the end of March, they want to have installed a further 60 uh, charge points, which is great news because um, that shows that momentum is starting to pick up. But they've also, um, it looks like, signed a deal with Ecotricity, uh, and it's gonna be mainly Greater um, London, but uh, who's to say that won't roll out further? that uh, they're going to use Ecotricity to install some of those charge points, um, as I say, around Greater London initially. Which is great news because Ecotricity have really um, gone all out to cover the motorway network with all the service stations. So that's kind of ticked that box. They need to now get onto major routes and um, into our major towns and cities where there's petrol stations that can not only offer the forecourt to accommodate the charging, but also uh, an area where we as consumers can go and um, enjoy a cup of coffee, a, a sit down, just whatever we need to do to get away from the car rather than sitting and waiting in there and getting bored. So um, so that's really good news and um, hopefully that rollout will continue throughout the year. Uh, and I think they're talking numbers of about 200 by the end of 2018. Um, and I, I think that'll probably be about half or just under half of their total number of forecourts that they're responsible for. So um, I, I think that's a reasonable rate of progress. We're getting there, let's be honest, the demand isn't really there yet. So they're not gonna be making their money back on it. But you know, if you follow these things, you can see that that demand is snowballing and it's not gonna be long before um, there will be a very high demand. And uh, my personal worry is that uh, we're gonna kind of hit a crossover point where there's insufficient chargers for the amount of EVs on the road. And um, even though the batteries are getting bigger and we're gonna be less reliant on them, um, I think there's gonna be more and more demand.
done and I'm a bit more work avoidance. I'll get to the housework at some point, it doesn't matter. Um, so the next company I wanted to talk about that seem to be um, rolling charging out across uh, Europe are, um, it's a combination of a company called Allegro and Fortrum Charge and Drive. Uh, they're already involved in the um, Ionity network, which is effectively motorway based charging systems. Um, this they're going to call the Mega E network, uh, which will look at um, charge locations away from the motorways, generally towns and cities. Um, I think they're looking at about 322 charge stations, I believe. Um, and they're going to have what they're calling uh, ultra fast chargers, so they will. Uh, work up to about 350 kilowatts so uh, we've spoken about it before there are no cars physically available on the road at the moment at that but that's the charge speed that cars are being designed to go at in the very near future so um so they'll be available and they're talking about at the charge stations a minimum of four chargers which will all be able to be plugged in at the same time and work at 350 kilowatts so that's a really big step forward uh, they're going to be rolled out across Europe, um, which includes the UK, and um, should hopefully fill in a few more of those gaps that, um, that are missing at the moment. Um, which brings me on to uh, more UK focused and the subsidies that the government are giving uh, local councils to install chargers. Now again, this has been in the news recently that um, on the back of the, the great bill that they announced, the great EV bill, um, among other things, uh, they were going to give grants to local councils to install charge points. Uh, the uptake of that has been near on nothing. Um, there's a few boroughs in London and a few other places that have taken it up, but basically the local councils aren't using it at all. Um, the grant goes so far as to pay for 75% uh, of the cost of each charge post, um, with the local council having to pay the last 25%. Now, on its own, not a massive amount of money. But I think the problem we're having at the moment is councils are so stretched and they're having to make their money go so much further that actually it's not very far up their list of priorities at the moment. Whilst um, a lot of them can see that EVs are where we're going, if there's not a demand at the moment, they've got so many other things that they need to be spending their money on that um, charge points just don't feature, even if they're uh, a very small amount of the money they need. So this kind of comes back to what I was saying before about I, I hope that councils have the foresight to see what's coming and that we don't get stuck uh, in a time when all of a sudden EVs are everywhere and there's insufficient charge points and potentially no grant left to um, install the charge points. Thing is, I understand where they're coming from. Having worked in the public service sector, uh, you know, on the whole, budgets are about uh, yearly forecasts they need to make their books balance year on year. To look at a project or a plan beyond the next financial year, and certainly going five to 10 years beyond, uh, it, it takes something massive. It takes a huge project in which to do that. And I don't think they see charge points as that kind of huge project. You know, in private industry, you'd probably see some sponsorship deals. You'd probably see um, the 75% grant come in and then the local energy company or um, you know some other EV based company would come in and pay the other 25% to have their name branded across the, the charge point uh, and the advertising that goes with it. It's not that simple in the public sector and um, it comes up with um, competition and all the rest of it uh, and it makes it really really difficult and it's such a shame because we again as the taxpayers don't always get the best deal but um, you know times will change and those charge points will get installed, whether it comes from the government and local authority or whether it comes from private industry. Uh, I personally feel most of it's going to come from private industry. Um, and as more cars become available, then there's more chance of them making money, they're more inclined to build the, the charges. So uh, that's where we are at the moment. It's just like a, a bit, bit of a um, look see to see where we'd come from when the big announcements were made last year. And um, things are definitely moving forward. Not um, rapidly as, as one would hope but it's definitely going in the right direction and I think as I said before it's a snowball effect it is beginning to pick up speed and um, over the next couple of years I really think that's going to increase 
uh, an awful lot more and we're going to see an awful lot more charges uh, in about our towns and cities which is great news and that draws today's vlog to an end um, if you've enjoyed it remember to like and share it uh, and if you're not doing so already subscribe to the channel and um, don't forget to hit that notification button uh, things have changed on there if you hit that then at least you get a notification when a new video comes up um, and uh, for now have a good day and I'll um, speak to you soon take care